I'm going to call this meeting to order. And as far as roll call, it looks like uh, Rhea and Chris and Crystal and Susie at this Where's point Susie? are missing. And Brad, Brad. And Bryden. Bryden. So we'll see. Um, so um, the first thing I'd like to ask is on the minutes. Does anybody have any corrections or revisions? I know you all read this before. I did. Yeah, yeah. Looks good. So, um, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? So moved. I move. Uh, Dale moves. Second. So I have a motion by uh, Dale and a second by Ellen to approve the minutes as submitted. Um, any discussion? If not, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion to approve the minutes has passed unanimously. So moving on um, to accessions. And I think, do all of you know um, Eileen? She's the registrar. Eric's on vacation, so she got to come and talk to us. Yeah, where does Eric go? Her I know. Believe. I know, <gasps> what? right? What? Can you believe it? Does Why he have a straw go? hat? <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Let's. Um, he needs a vacation. Point of order. <laughs> yeah. uh, we all hope that Eric is having a lovely time with him. Sunny believe. Yes. Great. Uh, okay, we're good. Proposed accessions for this month. Uh, there are three. The biggest uh, and probably most daunting from our point of view is uh, the first one, the Walnut Channel 8 archives. So this was the public access um, television channel. And their archives are mostly on video cassettes and DVDs and Betamax and a variety of other formats that we are working through <laughs> uh, from the 70s through the early 2000s, about 2010. Uh, they are videos of programming from that um, Channel 8 distributed. Uh, there are a few that are longer programs and we have most of the archives of that program like the upfront program was an interview show with local leaders um, that is you know five linear feet five banker boxes worth of um, archival material <coughs> uh, and then it is kind of all over the place from there um, we're pretty excited about it um, we did work together to move the archive from the Channel 8 building and so it's on site um, and we have, we are reasonably sure that we can take care of it um, and it fits. Sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I have a question Eileen. Do we have the proper equipment to access all of these different, I mean you know the list of Umatic, Umatic S, Beta Cam, VHS. We have everything except the Umatic player, which is probably not the right word, um, but it was before I was born. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a uh, um, director of uh, Channel 8 has a lead on the player. Theirs is not functional, but he has a friend who can fix them. and uh, So, we're working on it. We do want one. Um, there is, if we accession these, there will need to be discussion about how best to store the content um, and whether that's digitizing everything or transferring the material onto DVDs, which last a little longer. Um, it's an ongoing. Uh, we do have a beta camp player in the in archives <laughs> and the end. Yeah. 
What is U-matic? I've never heard that word. They're really big beta cam tapes. They, they just, they look like VHS tapes, but they're a little computered. Hmm. Know, they're from the early 80s. Just shows kind of the age of the archive and kind of an interesting to accept the February accessions as presented. Randy? Motion to accept. And a second. Second. It's Daniel. And is there any discussion? Okay, it's a quiet group. <laughs> I think there's too much stuff here. Channel A. There is a lot of stuff. Uh, we did not take everything. Um, well, there's some that you did indeed already leave out. Mm. Um, we were in things that were duplicates weren't taken. Oh, yeah. So they're all um, individual pieces. And we focused on specifically Longmont history or mm -hmm. Longmont specific programs. Uh -huh. uh, and so, yeah, there was just a lot there. <laughs> um, it will be a big project to catalog it all. Uh, I guess. But I guess. we're looking forward to it. Okay. Anybody yeah. else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you're ready to vote, then all in favor of uh, accepting this accession? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Oh. Um, the motion to accept all proposed sessions has passed unanimous. And Miss Kim, yes. would you like to give the report? Sure. So as usual, I'm not going to read this word for word for you guys. I'll let you um, read it through at your leisure. But I will pull out some highlights um, to just bring to your attention. Um, just for lack of a better word, under administration, that's um, some sort of high-level stuff that we've been working on at the museum. Oh, and now Bryden's here. Look at this. Oh, good. Yay. Sorry about that. Yay. Yes. Okay. Longmont trails. Longmont trains never uh, failed to disappoint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're working on the directorship room. Uh, find that in the pile. Um, 
So uh, you all may have heard, I know some of you actually were in attendance at the event that they held here at the museum, but the consultants that are working on the feasibility study for the Performing Arts slash Conference Center actually gave a presentation to um, City Council a couple of weeks ago. Um, they concluded what's sort of officially phase one of their research, which really just kind of makes some determination about whether or not there is demand in the city for a performing arts center or and or a convention center. And their assessment um, concluded that the, the conditions are favorable. Phase two really will dig deeper into understanding what that means um, and trying to look more specifically at what would a funding model look like, what would sustainability look like, what would building a building look like, like all of those really mm -hmm. meaty questions. Um, and so the real hard work is yet to be done. Um, and so I will keep you in the loop as I hear things on that. Um, the LDDA and the museum have um, partnered to lead a, a cultural plan initiative. Um, and so uh, Kimberly McKee and I are working on putting together a RFP, I think it's gonna be an RFP, um, to hire a consultant that will essentially bring artists and creatives from across Longmont together to try to understand um, where we can invest in a way that will be the biggest bang for the buck. Um, as you guys probably know, Arts Longmont um, basically has dwindled. Um, they used to receive city um, support and without a really functional board at this point, um, Sandy Cedar has um, reallocated the funds that were originally um, going to go to them to support this effort. And really the, the aim of this is to try, try to understand how we as the sort of creative community in Longmont can reinforce and support each other um, with limited resources because we know that that's the case. And so having um, a real plan to put in place to, to create that kind of map forward will be really important. So that's just now really getting started. Um, and then of course the the library feasibility study is going to have some conclusions probably in April. The performing arts feasibility study will probably have conclusions in March or April. Um, the creative district has some um, documents that they've already done. So these are all be documents that another consultant will be able to draw from to create this sort of bigger cultural plan. Moving on down to marketing de and development. Um, I think we've probably said this a million times, but just to reiterate it one more time, um, we really have, we, we know pretty darn sure at this point based on the work of the budget office that we have um, achieved the tier two uh, uh, revenue yeah. threshold yeah. to be able to apply for um, SCFD tier two funding. Um, and so we'll make that application just as soon as we can. The auditors are gonna be starting to work on that very soon. Um, and as soon as the auditors has, have completed their work, um, then we'll be able to put the application together. The application is due in May, but the portal is already open, so we can submit the application tomorrow if we have all the stuff together. So How we much do we get from them now? Well, so it's it's varied over the last few years. I think in 2017, we got 30,000. In 2018, we got about 19 two. Last year we got about twenty three thousand, or yeah, last year. So this um, is a big, pretty big deal. This is going to be amazing. It's going to be a really big deal. Great. And it's just an estimate at this point because until there's actual tax revenue and until they actually know how many um, organizations are in tier two, they won't know what that distribution looks like. But they're estimating that we'll receive an additional hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So it'll be a, a very big deal for us. Kim, you yeah. said um, somebody asked last time how many tier two organizations there are in Boulder County, and mm -hmm. I know I remember you said Chautauqua, but didn't you say there are one or two others? Yeah, I don't remember them off the top of my head, Gail, but I know it's Chautauqua, it's E Town. Seems to me there's some kind of a performing arts group, and that may be it. There's not many in Boulder County at all. But, but it's the whole of tier twos that the money gets distributed. Mm -hmm. So there are loads right. of other tier twos in other counties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, for tier, for Boulder County Tier 2, so there's really, I think, maybe four. Yeah, and I can get that if, if No, that's yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, some of you, I think, were here for the Terry Maker opening. We had about 250 people for that uh, um, opening reception, um, and it was super fun. People were dancing, which I think you can call a success. <laughs> and there were about 60 Giving Club uh, members that here were here for the preview portion of that, and Terry gave a private tour for those folks, so that was really fun. Um, Summer camp, I'm just kind of jumping down a little bit. Summer camp registration is open, so if you know any so youngsters, yeah, that's a good one. If you know anyone that's interested, there are some really exciting summer camps that we've got on offer. Um, and then that kind of uh, moves into the educational program. So discovery days, um, we've uh, so far we've awarded 464 out of 600 scholarships um, for that program. So that, as you may remember, and the Dodge Family um, Foundation has um, given money to provide scholarships for a lot of our educational programs. So that was that was part of it, the Discovery Days. There's also, um, we've awarded $3,000 for the school tour scholarships. Um, and those are for schools with an above average number of students that qualify for free and reduced price lunch. Um, so which is one of the sort of markers that we use to try to determine uh, the schools that are in need. Um, and so those are the folks that we're tar targeting for those scholarships. Um, and then we've awarded nine scholarships for the Spring Break Theater Camp. Um, and we've still got some to hand out for, for that program. But I think, Ann, I know Ann and, and Lee are really working hard to get those scholarships out. Um, and then moving down further into collections. Um, Probably none of you have met Elizabeth. Elizabeth Baudouin is um, a new museum technician. Um, she works almost exclusively out at the Museum Collection Center, and she's dutifully taking photographs and documenting collections out there. Um, this is uh, the sort of last leg of our IMLS grant that um, supported the move to the new storage facility. Um, and so she came with really, really high recommendations. She, um, uh, her partner was here in Colorado, and so she was trying to find a job out here. And um, so from across the country, lots and lots of really good accolades. And she has done a lot of work. You mm -hmm. can probably speak to this in a very short time that she's been with us. She is kind of a workhorse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good stuff. Yeah. She's got lots of uh, East Coast, uh, her background. Um, lots of Boston museums, and uh, her last stint was at the Maritime Museum in Bath, Maine. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. She'll be a good addition to the museum world out here. That's For sure. Mm -hmm. that. Um, Eric is finishing, he's put here, finished a chapter eight of the Longmont history book, but I suspect he's further along than that now, even. And, and it, that's out of nine or 10 chapters, he was thinking he might combine the last two chapters. Um, and the uh, draft w is due to the publisher in May, so that's mm -hmm. clipping right along. Mm -hmm. no, no, and we're all very excited about that. Should have it here um, in November. Um, back at the next page there, under Visitor Services, we've got um, an artist that we're working with, Eric Zimmer, who um, you may notice on this white back wall of the atrium um, is a whole bunch of um, tile work, basically, um, that are these little paintings with um, encaustic on them, white wax on them. Um, and so those are um, on consignment, so they're selling really quite well. We're very happy with that arrangement, and Eric's been super easy to work with, so that's always good. Um, we're also, we've done an exhibit catalog for our Terry Maker show um, that should be released um, beginning of March. We have photos of that, um, of the actual installation that are in the catalog, so that made for a delay in getting it out after the opening of the exhibit. Um, but it's for sale. If you are interested, you can go to our website and buy it even through that. And we'll did you, did you, you notice that Terry got the front page? of the Denver Post leisure section. Who is her agent? <laughs> she <laughs> is her agent. She is her agent. How did she get that? I mean, she, that was just really. She called Ray Rinaldi while he was on vacation in Bogota and had him write that for her. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah. I, was, I was so shocked so, to see that. Wow, that was great. She's, 
she's a mover and a shaker. Yeah. But it's a very good, it's very nice um, review of the show. So yeah. we we're very pleased to see yeah. that that is good stuff. Uh, in the under visitor services, we detailed that opening a little bit further that there were 91 members and 173 paid admissions, and then we sold nine new memberships. So, opening receptions are always a good um, time to be able to sell. What they do with all like leftover food? I don't know that there was any. No, was there was I think it got all eaten up. Mm -hmm. I have a question slash note on the postcard that went out for the opening reception. It yeah. said it was eight dollars for adults to go to the reception. Uh -huh. We, it's a paid thing. We treat it just like a, a museum admission. admission. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was so, hanging out with our installation artist, installing our show at the firehouse, and I was like, "We should go." And then we found out it was um, cocktail dress requested and eight dollars to get in. And we were like, "That's not for us today." Wait, so, are you <laughs> that? Yeah. No. No. Well, it, it's we handle it just like we handle regular museum admissions. So if cool. you're a member, you get in for free, and if you're, uh, we do the of course the giving club preview before the actual um, uh, opening reception, and so we treat it exactly the same way. The difference being, what well, I think what we're going to do, Brandy, for the um, the opening that's going to happen when is it in June? The opening that'll happen in June, we probably will have that one um, on the free day. Um, cool. So that exhibit opening will be free, and that's purposeful because that one is a, is a more um, kid-friendly, kid-focused exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, and that opening will be a daytime opening, so a really different feel, a really different audience. Um, and so um, we found in the past that with those kinds of events, um, that what ends up happening is that people kind of get distributed all over the building and in the courtyard and in the gallery and so in order to make that feel like it's got some presence to it, it's great to have it as a free event. So we're, we scheduled that one specifically for the free day for that reason. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, let's see. Um, H auditorium programming. Justin's got a big list there um, of things to, of the programs to highlight for you. And um, he's working with a new intern from C Boulder, Katrin Wright, who's really been helping him pull together some of the work, the things that he's been doing. Um, so you see that we've got concerts in um, the Curious Theater, and um, we had, and these are the things that we did in January, February. Um, the Senate Candidate Forum, that we had over 400 people here for that event, so that oh, was wow. a really big deal. Um, we had, uh, we set up the um, uh, classroom A, I'm losing, what's the name of that? Kaiser C. Thank you, Kaiser C. We set up Kaiser C with a, a monitor so that overflow people could go into that and still see the event. So that was a really successful thing for us to do. And then um, upcoming stuff, we had um, uh, movies and concerts, and then um, someone was talking earlier about this event, the Music of the Spheres, which will be a conversation with Terry Maker, um, with a scientist and um, a, a, a religious scholar. Um, and so that's going to be really fun. She, she, a lot of her work has to do with being um, a Christian, so we're sort of bringing together this um, uh, overlap of science and um, religion and art, so that'll be a very interesting one. And then later, March the, uh, when is it, um, 26th, Terry and I will be in conversation and we'll talk about some of that stuff as well. Um, it's really interesting and kind of unique in terms of contemporary art, so it's, it's a good thing to talk about. Um, then in exhibitions, um, we you see there, Jared puts together this really great graph that is sort of the only way that we can compare exhibits over time, um, this visitors per day. If we look at overall revenue or overall attendance, it's not a very um, easy comparison because some of them are much longer exhibits, some of them are um, much more intensive exhibits, and so um, really the thing that helps us understand visitation more than anything else is to, to look at the average number of visitors a day. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, to look at this, you're looking at the amped exhibit, and then the next one, um, the sort of salmon colored one is the um, Lane Dixon and then the big big one is is Lego, Lego. I hope you read that one so that's 
this is over years now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that looking at the end of the graph, um, what we can take away is that Ansel Adams was really quite successful. Um, that is the most successful art exhibit that we have hosted to date. Um, and so that those, the numbers for that were really great. Um, and then the um, exhibits team currently are working on developing an exhibit called Kiki the Tiny House, um, hands-on home building. And they are actually building a tiny house at the moment. Um, and then also they're building a shepherd's wagon and a lot of other sort of interactives and um, things that kids would be able to manipulate <coughs> and have fun with. So that's going to be a very cool exhibit that will appeal to kids but adults mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, the tiny house movement is so <laughs> big right now, so mm -hmm. be, I think it'll be a very successful exhibit. Uh, Jared's also hosting an SEU intern, um, and so I think those interns love working with the because they get to do all of that hands on stuff. All right, in public places, um, the call for entry is open right now through uh, for the Art on the Move project, and that's our temporary installation with, um, where artists install um, a piece of work for a one-year time frame. Um, there, the commission has um, approved the commissioning, the, the direct purchase of um, the um, a sculpture called Ursa Major, which you guys may remember because it was installed as an art on the move piece last, you know, two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a big bronze bear, if you guys remember mm -hmm. that. So we're actually going to purchase that one and it'll be installed on Main Street as mm -hmm. soon as we can get all of the contracts. What done. does it look like? It's basically a bear that's standing up. It's pretty much life size. You know what the bear is at the the big building downtown mm -hmm. Denver. Is it like Little. that? No, it's much more realistic. realistic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think that was realistic. It's blue. It's blue. It's blue. <laughs> it's blue but and it's also <laughs> supersized. Yeah, yeah. It's true. It's I would not want to meet that bear. Tours, right? Yeah. So the, the bronze one that you guys are buying has it's textured. Yeah. Yeah. It's like burnt. No, it's yeah. Like yeah. yeah. I passed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it was very popular when it was installed during the Art on the Move a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. And so, you know, people who've gotten all kinds of feedback. Well, that's great. Around. We want to bring it back. We want to bring it back. And How so much did it cost? Oh, boy, that's a great question that I don't know the answer to. Um, I think, but don't quote me, I think it was $30,000. Mm -hmm. Um, we have done, the Angela has done some preliminary um, data research where she is taking uh, traffic collection, data collection, and overlaying it with um, the Art and Public Places collection, and she is able to give us a lot more um, verifiable data about how much, how many eyeballs are hitting public art. So the, we're, we've sort of just started that project, and she's, she's working with her intern um, to, to really flesh that out more so that we can get um, more verifiable data about who's seeing public art, which will be a cool thing to be able to, to demonstrate. And then the Unity Project, some of you may see have seen mm -hmm. that. Um, Mario, who was the artist that created that originally, we are contracting with him to do some uh, 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 renovations of the piece. It's, okay. it's been damaged, and so he's going he's gonna to do some work to try to fix that. And I believe that it's true that we're going to try to video it um, so that we've got that documentation I'll be attending to share mm -hmm. through public media. That's my report. Does anybody have any questions for me? Well, I don't have a report. Um, on to old business, I just would mention that if you don't mind when Joanne sends out the packets, you can just let her know whether you're going to be able to be here or not. That's helpful because sometimes we need to make sure we have a quorum. And I know sometimes if there's a train or kidlets or whatever, then <laughs> it doesn't always work out. But if you could let her know, then that would be very helpful. Um, do we have any new business? I'm glad Joanne put this Robert's Rules of Order on a piece of paper. Yeah, thank okay. I will credit Eve with that. Eve, mm -hmm. Eve did a lot of work on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. We'll try to get a little more, a bit more lined up with that as we move forward. So, uh, Anybody have any other comments? Any? Yes, where does it go to stop snowing? <laughs> 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 okay, I should have been more specific about which comments. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there aren't any more comments or discussions.
discussion. Do you know what? Actually, I do have a question. Okay. So, cool. as a city council liaison, am I a voting member mm -hmm. or no? Mm -hmm. I'm just so that's when I because there are some that I sit on that I vote and some that I don't. And yeah, historically, the council liaison has never voted. Okay. So that's what I wanted to make sure. But you're so welcome to like, make I'm any kinds of comments. Or okay. Certainly <laughs> participate <laughs> in the discussion. Uh, sure. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. No, that's so. fine. I have one question, Joanne. Who do we get to publish these things? You know, is it I the same person every? Is it the same company every time? Because this is not cheap. Sure, I can get with. I have Joan get with you on that because I honestly don't know what printer this we're using. This stuff is really expensive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a large printer based in Denver that does a lot of like athletic programs. Oh, maybe they do mm -hmm. that. And they, they tape like that. <laughs> that would be one of my cover. guesses. They're yeah. they're really mm -hmm. quality and affordable. So I, I don't remember what they are. Because yeah. mm -hmm. oh, th this museum is always sending out stuff like this that was very impressive, and mm -hmm. uh, it looks very expensive. You have to be able to mm -hmm. get people to sign up for all the good things we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got to catch their eye. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're in the same league with Chautauqua and E-Town. That's so right. Got That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep up those standards. <laughs> All right. So, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Ellen, I have a second. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All, All, goody, All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. There being no further business this meeting. Mm -hmm.